Rocky Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, M.D. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AM Impact on Your Health. AM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AM Impact on Your Health, heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, a lot of excitement in the air, folks. At least, hope you've been anticipating that this day's arrival would come. I'm really looking forward to this uh, uh, interview. We'll call it an interview today. It's really meeting with an old, old friend. I uh, went just on the phone with her, and she, I mean, the thing didn't even ring. She was there telling me she's itching to come back and be with you today. Of course, I'm talking about uh, local girl made good. Uh, we've all come to appreciate, know, and love uh, and respect the words of Deborah Ray. Deborah Ray is going to be our guest today. Uh, Pittsburgh girl born and raised, well, Greensburg, we'll claim her, uh, and always loves to come back and talk to Pittsburgh, and she's itching to get at it again today. So we're going to be with, the, with uh, our uh, departed illustrious um, expert on all that's alternative, all that's healthy. Deborah Ray is our featured guest today. So in the course of our discussion with Deborah, I know her very well, as you do too. If anybody wants to ask a question and make a comment, that number, of course, will be 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Uh, I promised you, and I promised her, so she shouldn't be surprised, we're going to find out about this new guy in her life. I don't know if it's new, if he's old, but he certainly is a husband. Deborah Ray's married, <laughs> and uh, we're going to find out about that. First up, I promise you, as soon as we get with her right after that first break. So, uh, Deborah Ray, our featured guest today. Now, going over uh, the Peter DeWitt show, big hit. I hope you, I mean, I'm, I'm really interested in his message, and uh, so strong a message it is that uh, we're bringing him back, folks. He's going to be our featured guest next Wednesday on what we'll call Part 3, and it will be the interesting show that I believe you've all been waiting for because we're finally going to get to his 18-point treatment program, and as a medical doctor, he has not let himself down and will have to let you down on the physical component of his 18-step program. Ten of them deal with that. You'll be interested to hear his take on things like diet and exercise and detoxification and his own little imprimatur, his own stamp uh, on each and every one of those. And then those last eight, the, the new eight uh, that, that makes literally you uh, in the driver's seat, puts you in the driver's seat with respect to treating your disease. Remember, disease, I, I think this quote is as good as any to open up with Peter Dewey. Disease is a blessing, according to Peter. Uh, an outward sign that your brain had to do something for you because um, you were set to go over a cliff. And anyway, if you've been with us in the past couple of shows, you understand what I'm talking about. If not, still, don't miss next Wednesday's show. On Monday, Brian Fultz is going to be returning with us, that representative of a company called Standard Process. You know so much about them now and uh, come to respect uh, what they represent in terms of a quality product. We're going to be talking about a nutritional exam done by Brian literally on me, leading to what he says I need, and uh, maybe it'll be a step up for what you might be able to participate in here in our office. Uh, Brian Fultz returning with us on Monday. Um, got a new guest, uh, the name of which eludes uh, me. We'll talk about that for schedule for the 20th. PR group called me on that one. Uh, we're moving toward that famous Christmas show. Uh, please bear with me. It's just become a tradition around here, but we won't uh, be able to, to get to that one and shouldn't get to that one. Actually, to Christmas Eve Day show, which will be Friday, and uh, that's the way that one will work. Just peeking into January now, some returners. Uh, Stuart Reeves coming back. Uh, and by the way, 
uh, Doctor, uh, the new Doctor, blah, 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 boom. Uh, Susan Smith Jones is going to be back with us on the 6th of January. Interestingly, folks, uh, you really did respond to her, uh, and I know this because uh, Penn Herb, Pennsylvania Herb and Spice, called me the other day to say, what did you do in Pittsburgh? Our phones rang off the hook after the show you did with Susan Smith Jones. So we really appreciate, you know, we met uh, Dr. Susan Smith Jones as a result of uh, the president of the company, who normally does come on my show each and every year, saying, you know what, I'm not going to do that with you this year. I got you a better spokesperson. And that's how we came to uh, become to know Dr. Susan Smith Jones. I loved her. You loved her. And you did respond. Her knowledge on the oldest products was unparalleled. She did a better job than the president of the company. And um, that's why we're bringing her back. But Penn Herb said, hey, the response, Dr. Courtney, to that show was just fantastic. Our phones rang off the hook. Um, so much so that we got a special thing um, cooking with them. Uh, if you do call up for these old bus products, which are the great symptom relievers, of course, Dr. Susan Smith Jones, who doesn't get sick, takes them prophylactically. That's how much she trusts them. Uh, but that whole old bus line, you can order them here through us. We absolutely have been using old bus products for quite a while. But if you'd rather uh, deal with the company, if you use a code, we, we came up with a code yesterday, which is uh, DC, Dr. C, Dr. Courtney. If you just, if, if calling Olbus, I'm giving you that number, 800-523-9971. That's 1-800-523-9971. Say you want to order whatever it is that you do want to order, and then say, there's a code, Dr. C, DC, DC and you'll get all kinds of special treatment and special free stuff if you use that code. Uh, we worked that out yesterday, and let me know how it's working for you. Uh, if you missed it, call them up again and say, look, I was one of the people who, who uh, was uh, calling you up after the Dr. Susan Smith Jones show, and I didn't get any free stuff. I would like to put in my code now, <laughs> DC, ought to do it for you, and I'll unlock a lot of doors. Anyway, let's see how that works. Um, for the Spirit, as you well know, we'll be getting into some of those peripheral items today uh, with their gift packaging uh, for December. Uh, the $29 for the For the Spirit um, uh, supplement drink uh, of the uh, 14 Biblical Fruit Parades is now packaged specially for the same $29. You get the bottle, uh, which is enough for an entire month. Of, uh, of the product, but you also get a shot, it's a shot glass, a measuring glass, the book, uh, Harmony, written by Deborah Ray, along with uh, two physicians that uh, we haven't brought them on the show. We should really do it. And a book explaining the product. That's all for twenty nine ninety five. should be able to send it. They promise to have it delivered for Christmas, so it looks like it's getting closer. You better do that sooner rather than later. Uh, in the news, uh, I should mention, cut my eye, I'm always searching the news. Uh, if there's ever been a show that has taken a stand on mammograms, it's certainly been this one. And a little blurb uh, passes my way via the Huffington Post. Yes, it's that lefty organization. But they got a great uh, uh, way of blogging out a lot of medical items. One happened to hit my eye with respect to mammograms. Turns out, you know, last year... Uh, after they uh, really hit it, as they usually do, on the month of October with trying to herd and huddle women into getting a mammogram. November, the government said, you don't need to do that. You shouldn't do that if you're under the age of 50. You shouldn't require any mammograms at all. Women went nuts, but that is the recommendation. They could no longer ignore the literature on the subject. Turns out, and here's the, bro, here's the little uh, rub up today, um, uh, the uproar of last year, it turns out whenever they were going over uh, insurance companies and the uh, experience they had on the coverage for mammograms, hey, you women were ahead of the thing anyway because it turns out over 40% over, uh, let's see, so it turns out only half of the women over 40 had been getting them anyway. You already knew intuitively you shouldn't be doing it and you weren't doing it. And I just said, uh, hey, my hat's off to you ladies. You already knew this was not what it was up, up to be. And uh, let medicine deal with what medicine has to deal with. You just keep uh, saying no 
to these uh, mammograms, especially for the age of 50. And think about that thermogram that we've been promoting so much. Okay, enough of the uh, stuff in the news. Why don't we do this? I know I'm looking forward to getting uh, to become uh, to, to to speak with her. Aren't you ready to listen to her? We got Deborah Ray in the wings. I'll go find her again. I know she's she's at the place that she said she would be. And uh, let's start to find out what's going on with Deborah Ray, as you well know. Some new stuff is going on already. We're going to hit it first thing. So we'll be back in a moment with Deborah Ray. This is Dennis Shea Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion. For you to follow, it seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. There you are, John. We're going to do nutrition testing, immune system, uh, yeah, we're going to natural hormone the replacement medicine, therapy, chelation therapy, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. We're here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. Here we are today on a Friday version of the show. We do call this a get em up out of town version of the show, and, but it's different today. Uh, rather than just having you call in and set the tone, uh, we've brought you a special guest today, and each and every time we're with her, well, we get a lot of warm fuzzies coming off of this woman, but we get a lot of knowledge and information, too. Uh, Pittsburgher, well, Greensburger, uh, born and raised, uh, moved on to greater lands. She was our connection, folks. She's the one that first brought us how to approach health in a way, well, maybe we never really had looked at it before. Uh, she uh, then moved uh, well, locations and, uh, and became our coast-to-coast -coast representative of health. She's with us today talking about what she's up to now. Of course, I'm talking about uh, our, our famous gal, Deborah Ray, who's with us right now. Let's say good morning and welcome, Deborah. Welcome back to the airways that you started with. Morning, Dr. Courtney. So nice to be with you. Well, there's no finer guest that I like to be with than you. And i um, got to tell you, Deborah, we're going to get right to it. We were talking to Deanna Naylor uh, not too long ago, a few months ago. And at the time, uh, she said, oh, well, you know, Deborah's raised. She's out of the country right now. She's up in Vancouver with her husband. And uh, uh, I, I just uh, got a little queasy there for the moment because I didn't know about a husband. And uh, not that you have to... <laughs> clear it with us, but you've got to tell us about your new guy. Uh, his name is Ron, I understand. Please tell Pittsburgh, they all want to know how it is that you came to meet the gentleman. This new guy in your life turns out to be, if he's in your life, he's in our life too. Hey, talk to us a bit about how you met Ron and, and uh, your new husband. Well, I had met him some 15 years back because one of the businesses that he is in is uh, owning radio stations. Ah. And 
and um, had kind of filed that away, and um, then had yes, meet with the change with uh, Dr. Burroughs Clinic and the radio show to look for a radio studio, so I called him up less than four years ago and asked about um, a radio studio and some equipment and uh, ended up with a dinner invitation. Uh, let's see, a little over a year ago, we got married. That is, a, well, how appropriate that would be, too, a guy who could set up radio stations. Huh? Funny how that would be the connection, huh, Doug? Well, I have to tell you the story behind the story. Please, that's what we really want to know. Give us the story behind the story. Because about four and a half years ago, I decided, heck, you know, I would like to have, you know, somebody in my life to uh, ah. to a nice concert with. It had been literally over 30 years since the first day. And... <laughs> it was, okay, where do I start? So, uh, you know, technology, I said, I'll try harmony. Well, I got fixed up with three attorneys, which didn't say much about my personality. <laughs> yeah, what does that say, Deborah? My goodness, three attorneys? So, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, you know, like the next week came the dinner invitation for Ron. <laughs> Ron it was meant to be. It was certainly meant to be. E-Harmony, uh, I don't know. It's, I don't think that the lawyer community really was what you were destined to, to hook up with. How great to hear that. Uh, get a new replacement for our old old buddy, Dr. Don Caro, who's probably just smiling. Oh, I'll get out looking down at this whole situation. Uh, glad to hear that you've got your new soulmate, uh, Ron, and uh, as it has turned out now, you got married, how long ago was it? Uh, but we'll be celebrating our second anniversary coming here. Well, as many times as I've spoken with you, which isn't all that many, I have to admit, and it just uh, is never something I asked, never brought it up. Uh, that's why we fell, all fell off our chairs when Deanna had mentioned that you were in Vancouver with your husband, as of course you should be, but we had no clue. It's not uh, so. It's something that you would have purposely ignored. It just never came up in conversation. I'm sure that was the oversight, but hey, Deborah, you can't be doing stuff like that to us. If, you're, if something like this comes into your life, you've got to announce it. You just can't have it come to us, uh, come to us uh, in a serendipitous manner. Please don't do that to us again. Well, it wasn't a huge wedding. It was just the two of us and my mother. Uh, as it should be. And your mom, is everything okay health-wise with your mom? She still does. Eight, God bless her. Has a uh, list on her dashboard of all the outlet malls. <laughs> <laughs> Between Lexington and Tampa. 15 hour drive that she does by herself at 81 years of age. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, God bless you. So, no burden, just a, a, just a crazy gal out there ripping up the highways, and I'm sure doing it in fine fashion. Thank you for allowing us to to share that little piece of personal, uh, uh, the personal touch between uh, you and us. And I promise, uh, well, it's over. We have now understand how you met the new fella. And uh, please pass on our best wishes to Ron, uh, who I'm sure sometime I'll meet in the flesh. And can't wait to do it, by the way. All right, let's get to the Deborah Ray stuff that we always get to, which, Deborah, you, you never let grass grow under your, your feet, uh, so to speak. We always want to start our show with saying, well, what's, what is new with uh, Deborah Ray? What are you into now that you weren't into before? Or if it's more of the same, tell us how you're passing your day and the projects you're interested in and what's new. I'm going to ask you, what's old and what's new? Well, I have had the opportunity um, to kind of put into action all that I gathered over those years with three uh, people very close to me. Uh, dealing with cancer in the last six months, uh, including uh, uh, a woman who has been uh, facing what was given to be a, a terminal lung cancer diagnosis six months ago. And uh, thankfully, I just had a PET scan this past Friday. Um, everything is just wonderful. She did continuous vitamin C during therapy. And I have to say that, of course, it never ceases to amaze me. In the year 2010, how people deal with patients with cancer don't know what vitamin C is, don't know what vitamin D is, ask patients, what is that, why would you take that? Um, but all three of them, breast cancer, 
the lung cancer and cutaneous T cell lymphoma cancer, doing uh, doing very well after six months. But what a privilege for me to walk alongside them in their journey. So we talked to Dr. Ralph Moss, we talked to Dr. Moshe, uh, Moshe uh, Frankel at MC Anderson. Uh, we talked uh, to folks who carried on the Coley mixed toxin vaccine at that pharmaceutical company in uh, Canada. So it was a, it was one real privilege for me to be part of that journey with them. Two, to really you know put into action um, all those things we gathered and talked about on the air for all those years. Boy, vitamin C and cancer, uh, a staple item uh, with most of the alternative docs that I know. Certainly. Uh, in my own practice, cancer treatment uh, is uh, something that I very much have been aware of and been into. And the use of intravenous vitamin C in these high doses has been the staple that I think we all have agreed, we being the, the, the medical community, dealing with cancer in a non-toxic way. To hear that, uh, as I'm sure that, that, uh, that you have been the, the major force and proponent of, of non-toxic therapies for years. Uh, and talking about vitamin C, and then, you know, is it well, cancer will touch us all. And it certainly appears that it has touched you in, the, in close and strong relationships. Three people within the year, huh, that, uh, that you had a, a really personal and strong relationship with actually responded in a way that you had hoped that they would. Turns out, it worked for them, huh? It did, and, and the opportunity, thanks to, uh, again, another innovative doctor, to, you know, just like yourself, Dr. Courtney, the, um, using a PICC line for continuous vitamin C. So, you know, talking to all those experts, you know, knowing that Dr. Drisco, Dr. Drisco at the University of Kansas, and, you know, again, one of those innovators who wanted to keep those vitamin C levels high and continuous, um, you know, that's difficult for cancer patients with all they've got you know, going on and how they feel. So using a pick line, so in essence, this patient, um, you know, Linda wore a fanny pack for eight weeks of continuous vitamin C. Uh, went through six rounds of very, very toxic therapy uh, after being told July 7th, six weeks to live. And uh, here last week, told her her PET scan was just, I mean, <laughs> this doctor, his grin reached from one ear to the other. It was just, it made all of our hair stand on end, just how positive her response was. Well, outstandingly, uh, the pick line, you know, the, the vitamin C, uh, as, as great as it is, uh, it's got to be in these high doses. You just can't do it orally. So uh, I always hear vitamin C come up as a selection of patients who are trying to to get an edge with cancer, but you just can't do it orally, Deborah, as you well know. You really do need to confront this by intravenous approaches. The PICC line is just a great way to ensure that you get access to a larger uh, vein than you can peripherally. I think the limits would be uh, 50,000 milligrams. Um, I think it's uh, pretty much understood in, the, in our community that you can't really go over 50,000 milligrams uh, in, a fifth, in a peripheral vein, you gotta, if you're gonna do higher doses and you need those higher doses, you get a pick line put in. And it's nothing more than a 20 minute procedure uh, done in uh, usually hospital radiology departments to get that access. But once obtained, God, I've had pick lines last for uh, as much as a year uh, and uh, allowing them uh, to, well, to start usually their, pro their process here in the office and then allowing them to be able to do it at home once you teach the family how to do it, it uh, ensures that you can do it around the clock, pretty much. And uh, glad to hear that it worked for you. Not surprised, by the way. Just glad to see that uh, that it worked in the cases where loved ones of yours, people that you knew, could benefit because of that pick line placement and doing it around the clock. Then you had the opportunity to call up Andy Stoll, again, who wrote The Doctor Yourself. His wonderful website still has those books from, you know, for example, Dr. Fred Klenner. Uh, who was at Duke University for all those years, he talked about you know, how he would give thousands and thousands of units of vitamin C to patients who were in the early stages of polio, actually stopping and reversing it, that this has been going on by pioneers just like yourself, Dr. Courtney, for decades, yet it's still not part of the mainstream lexicon, even though it can be just 
so powerful and so positive for people. Well, too, and uh, I'm sure you're aware of the article, and just this is the appropriate time to mention it. Um, this has even been um, uh, at, uh, uh, proven beyond a shadow of a doubt at no uh, lesser an institution than NIH and NCI with Dr. Mark Levine, I know that you know him, uh, who who <laughs> proved beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, via these two organizations that vitamin C does kill cancer. Uh, it's just that you're not going to hear about that article and you're not going to hear about Dr. Mark Levine from any other source other than the alternatively minded individuals because it literally got swept under the rug, but it has been proven. And um, you've come across Dr. Mark Levine, haven't you, in your in your in your travels? I have. And so that article is out there. I say, if you want to copy that article, folks, give us a call here at the office. We'll be happy to. I I I proudly display that article to any cancer patient. They need to know that there's research that backs this up at NCI National Cancer Institute, NIH. Uh, it's just that uh, they're not going to be talking to you about it. You're not going to be hearing this from the conventional medical community. And Mark Levine no longer is at NCI and NIH. And where, do you happen to know where he is? No, I don't. In fact, I was just talking to Bill Sardi yesterday. He sees somebody, he sees somebody. So I, I hope to track him down and tell him you know, of these three additional uh, cases. Because it just, it's, uh, <laughs> thankfully, we were able to find mainstream oncologists in all three cases who were at least open. Um, but, you know, as I, as I go back to again, Dr. Cord, in 2010, how can oncologists say, what's vitamin C and why would you be taking it? So, you know, at least in some cases, there are practitioners who are willing to learn this. But think of all those patients who don't act, have access to these therapies. So, wait a minute. You actually got oncologists to buy into the fact that vitamin C could work, and they actually um, brought themselves up to speed and, and managed the case? You found oncologists that would do that? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Now, there's a twist. Oh, boy. That, that truly is. Normally, we don't find oncologists do anything more than tolerate uh, their patients who say that they're going to move on a course of vitamin C. To find out that it's spreading through the you know, oncology community, you actually could convince them um, man, Deborah, you you've done you've done a yeoman's job to be able to encourage oncologists to jump in, so to speak. Glad to hear about it, and uh, be happy to hear anything else that comes up on that radar screen in the future. Yeah. Again, you know, just just the blessing of talking to those people for all those years, and, and with, with Linda, we had the opportunity to uh, place a call. Thanks to Dr. Ralph Moss to Dr. Moshe Frankel who headed the Integrative Medical Department at MD Anderson uh, for many years. He's now in Israel on sabbatical doing research. He's also a homeopathic doctor. So he gave us homeopathic remedies that uh, there's a, a major center in India with an unbelievable success rate treating cancer to the degree that Anderson, the National Cancer Institute, and Memorial Sloan Kettering have now all three sent doctors to this facility in India because they say, oh my goodness, homeopathy appears to be working for cancer. <laughs> you know, here's, here's mainstream doctors, yet you don't be adhered about it uh, to any degree that we really should that for. Well, those famous Moss reports that he, Dr. Ralph Moss coined, where you could, you could literally get the, 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 the literature and the documentation of how, I think it's safe to say, how poorly those conventional therapies actually were. Ralph brought us the ability to, to benefit from his research. You named the cancer. He gave you the information, and it wasn't good in terms of uh, the majority of the, uh, the chemotherapeutic approaches. And to hear that, uh, that, uh, that he always did support the use of uh, vitamin C. I felt that the Moss reports were a great contribution, didn't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And for that continued T-cell lymphoma cancer patient, um, he told us uh, uh, about a, a firm in Canada. I had the opportunity to, uh, to interview an author of a book six years ago because this business was so interesting, the Coley vaccine, and now has started a pharmaceutical company in Canada 
we in the U.S. have the right to uh, either go to an office at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver or the, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical company's office, which is, is in Ontario, just north of uh, Buffalo, and bring in a three-month supply because, you know, here's a, a vaccine that was in the conventional medical literature for the 1970s, fell by the wayside because it didn't generate enough money to, uh, you know, to go through, again, you know, FDA approval after losing that patent. Yet, you know, Dr. Moss knows the you know, Dr. Courtney, and, you know, helps people find that um, and use those as options. Boy, you have, you got involved in cancer in a way. I know you never wanted to, but uh, to find out that your guidance has helped three close individuals just, uh, I'm sure, has made you feel wonderful about this and those three people, too. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get some information from you and, and bring on to my radio show uh, these more illustrious individuals, some names I've, uh, that you mentioned I know of, others that I don't. Um, hopefully we can delve into this more in 2011. That's just right around the corner, Deborah. So um, I think there's some up-and-coming guests that will spill off of this conversation on the issue of being cancer, which um, uh, I'm happy that I have to say so much of what I learned came from you and Dr. Corot, and it's just uh, moved on down the line to others. Um, I've been able to help, and uh, hopefully uh, in the year 2011, we'll get more refinements out of this issue on cancer. Thank you for bringing it up in a way that I'm, I'm sure that uh, you, you're helping to have, uh, you're happy to have helped close members of your own circle. As I always said, it's the Lord's choice to Ray. <laughs> if, if you're listening, and you know how blessed I was to have this information and then be able to you know, to, to walk along these people, you know, alongside these people in, in their journey, um, you know, it's a real privilege for me to do that. Uh, so be it. Hey, speaking of uh, Dr. Carew, you had envisioned uh, bringing uh, all of, uh, I don't know, there were notes, there were the, the, his records, his whatever. You were trying to put a book together uh, that uh, was enabling you to bring to us so much of his writings. Did, how is that, did that ever come to be? Is that something that's still in the, in the works with you? has expanded more of a, of a web project right now. I've had the opportunity, thanks to the friends that I work with uh, in Washington, uh, with naturalhealthsciencenews.org. Um, so we're gathering uh, the CD because it will be not only the written version. I had a couple of notebooks of, of those protocols, but of course we have all those radio interviews. So, so we're... We're still working on it. <laughs> you still, do you still have all those? Uh, do you have all those shows in some archive? Uh, the shows back to October first, nineteen eighty-two. Wow. We have Bob Mendelson, the Minor Falling, and all those wonderful greats. Uh, so not only will we have Dr. Pro, but we'll have some of those uh, those other real standout interviews over those years. Our plan is to put it all up on the website. Uh, put the information you know, from from Dr. Crow's site as well. So. Uh, oh my you know, goodness! I didn't realize you had all those shows. Uh, yep, every single one. <laughs> oh, what a great thing to tintillate us with! You can. When will this website, or how is that congealing, so that we'll be able to uh, to, to think that I could uh, we could dial up an interview you did with Linus Pauling? It sends shiver us up like his mind right now. How could how and when will this take place? Well, thankfully, we had an intern over the summer because this was literally storage and air conditioning storage unit full. <laughs> <laughs> Back in 82, they were in a different format, and those had to be uh, you know, uh, put on hard drives, uh, you know, one to preserve them because they were original on cassette tape. Sure. Other years, we have them on CD. Uh, so it's, it's a work in progress. Hope. By the time the uh, the intern gets back to us in May, that we can wind it up. So. Oh my goodness, Grace, we'll be looking. I'll be bugging you about it, Deborah. I didn't realize that's finally how you decided to put this all together to bring all your shows. Is uh, so much great work was done that we all came to to uh, uh, came to know you and Dr. Caro through those shows, 
and there's so many great guests. Uh, I know I've experienced it since I've been doing radio shows to think, and I've got archives to think that you've got the original shows bringing back to 82. All right, Deborah, I'll be looking forward to see how that shapes up in the year 2011 when you think you'll actually be able to put them up, huh? Okay, big enough pro. Uh, but the, knowing you, you haven't limited yourself to this only project. So, let me ask this question: What, uh, what did you think, uh, as staying involved as you are, that were the big stories of 2010? Here we are in December. Uh, you are involved intimately with the uh, National Health. Um, uh, what's Natural Health. Yes. So, as you saw 2010, what were the big stories in 2010? What was the big research? What are the big items that you could list out for us uh, as occurring in 2010? Well, it continues, and I was amazed as I went back and looked at some of the short form features that I did starting back in 1998. Um, realized I was talking about vitamin C in the research in 2000 and 2001. But uh, you know, what has come to light, particularly in the last year, that um, I was just talked the other day to Dr. Michael Hollis, that 17 different cancers that can be prevented and to a large degree um, so it really defines how patients do in terms of vitamin D levels. Oh, boy, Dr. Hollis and vitamin D. One in ten of our genes is dependent upon vitamin D. He taught me just the other day every cell our body, Dr. Portman, has a receptor for vitamin D. And some of the latest research that he's really excited about and got me excited about was uh, that there's some very profound uh, research, not only out of Switzerland, that shows that perhaps the optimal vitamin D should be 70 to 100, our blood level should be, but that aging, people who have more wrinkles, have vitamin D deficiency. And there is this whole line of research going on to show that not only how we you know, age, deal with diseases like cancer and other diseases of the immune system are in large part dependent upon our vitamin D deficiency, but how we look, how we age, wrinkles, uh, have to do with vitamin D. And they, they, they feel that that's going to be a, a real place in anti-aging of the future. And I was just like, wow, I never knew that. Well, I thank Dr. Hollick to this day. His famous lecture, which was on a website that I... I was able to listen and, and observe and watch, uh, brought me to the conclusion, because he's such an excellent speaker, Dr. Hollick. Uh, he, he's captivating. Uh, I thought it was foretelling that uh, here he is, a derm, uh, dermatologist, okay, uh, and literally uh, bringing vitamin D to uh, the prominence that it is, where most of dermatology has you running away from this sunshine vitamin uh, I don't know how he's received by his other dermatological colleagues, but he didn't waver. He has brought vitamin D into the prominence. I, I said all along that uh, vitamin D turned out to be the hot vitamin for 2010. So when I asked you, what did you think was big in 2010, to hear you say the vitamin D story, boy, it certainly matches up in my own mind to be the important story of all for 2010. It was the hot vitamin in 2010. It remains. And uh, uh, to, to get a level, to get a drug level, to find out in Pittsburgh, I'll tell you, uh, here's the story as it shapes up. We're so far north here that the vitamin D levels, I have 11 patients that when I measured them uh, had, 30, had normal levels, meaning they just made it over to 34 nanograms per milliliter the optimal levels are certainly well into the 70s and 80s, 
and uh, all of my patients are on target to arrive there. Uh, as we meet them, we find them so low in the teens usually, um, but we're pursuing it and making to get them, them up to this healthy level that Dr. Hollick brought to my attention. I I'll, I'll, uh, rue the day that I had a chance to to see that that internet um, speech that he gave. Uh, I'll hand it out. Um, I, I got to find that. What do you happen to know the website? Because isn't drholick.com or something like? Drholick.com. Drholick.com. Um, again, you know, just last week he was telling me if you live on a latitude north of Atlanta or even San Diego, the 34th parallel, that famous latitude. Yes. You have a hundred percent increased risk of having an autoimmune condition because there's really nothing you can do in terms of sun exposure. You add to that you know, the fact that our membranes aren't right. We don't get enough of the good fat. We don't eat normal protein to have normal cell membranes. Um, that this you know, uh, vitamin D deficiency is truly epidemic, Dr. Gordon. So, so widespread is that uh, uh, epidemic issue with the vitamin D? It's it's like a laser. We focus on all patients get that le that level, and it's 25 OHD3. For those of you who are saying, oh, "Geez, I wonder what my vitamin D status." Get a drug level, a blood level. Excuse me. 25 OHD3 is what you have to ask for. Don't uh, allow uh, the word uh, the uh, vitamin D level on that labs or the thing that goes to the lab, because there are five vitamin Ds, Deborah. Did you know that? Yes, I understand. Um, thanks to John, uh, Dr. John Jacob Snell. You, I'm sure have spoken to him over the, uh, the years at the Vitamin D Council, um, you know, front and center on his website. And perhaps you could make it available to your listeners. Uh, DRT Labs now has a home test kit for vitamin D. So uh, <laughs> some, some of these cancer patients, Vitamin D for 2010. Tell us what's on the drawing board. That the, the, the project with the shows is certainly a, a laudable goal, and we'll hold you to it for 2011. What else is shaping up to be on the on the horizon for Deborah Ray in 2011? What else will you be getting your little hands into this year? I'm gonna. Thank you to uh, have the privilege of helping the folks get through the spirit. Uh, good friends here in the Tampa area who uh, work with Tony Dungy in his ministry with uh, you know, young athletes. Uh, we're, we're hoping because they are very open, eager to make nutrition part of a focus with these young athletes. Uh, because our young people, you know, I continue to marvel with my three- or four-year-old Sunday school <laughs> that are to coordinate. Uh -huh. you know, they, that two-year-old, can tell you all those ads on television of those high-sugar, high-fat foods that you know, we really have need to make sure that good nutritional choices are available, are affordable, are convenient for our families, uh, particularly our children, because you know, those are the generations to come. And uh, we know nutrition not only affects them, but will affect their offspring as well. Your relationship with Fruit of the Spirit has certainly been one uh, that we've glommed on to. We thank you so much for doing those spots. Each and every show that I uh, do has the Deborah Ray touch every day because of the spots you did for me. Thank you so much. Through the Spirit, uh, it remains a prominent component of our show and our offering here. And um, I'm still with Dr. Dr. Young. Um, the last time we spoke to you, you were literally in his office um, providing a, a level of expertise uh, what, a, what a great touch that was. Are you still working with Dr. Young down in Tampa? Um, the, 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 three, the three cancer patients has, has prevented that, uh, but you know, we certainly still, uh, still keep in touch. Um, we still talk to people who you know, want access to additional information. You want to take a look at, at all of their treatment options. So uh, it's a, a real privilege to 
think he'll continue to have that opportunity to reach out to health care consumers, take a look at some of their health care challenges, and try and look at you know, some of those treatment options. There's so much focus today about that wonderful, you know, the, the, the next commutation of the prolotherapy, platelet-rich plasma. So many people who have joint issues, you know, literally turned, told, learn to live with it, might be taking you know, steroid injections for the rest of your life. And here again, you know, harnessing the body's ability to heal that those platelet-rich plasma injections. I just simply just to be amazed how, you know, in some cases, it's just it's one injection will forever better that person's life because their shoulder, their hip, their knee no longer causes them lose sleep or be in pain all the time, Dr. Well, there's a, there's a Dr. Donald Carreau. The prolotherapy brought to our attention by him uh, now begins to resonate countrywide. Uh, it's all started. My knowledge, my first knowledge of prolotherapy was because of Dr. Carreau. I'm glad to see that, uh, that that kind of an art is still available. I'm happy to be able to do the prolotherapies in my area. Uh, and it, it blossomed, and it has it really taken on another life of its own. I'm finding prolotherapy to really be uh, a, a new item available countrywide, and it first brought to my attention by Dr. Carreau back when, and glad to hear it's, uh, it's, it's taken on the prominence. No surprise, but taken on the prominence that it's had countrywide. No, we, we learned about it from Dr. Pierre Coop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't that the case? Yeah. in those injections. And of course, we now know that uh, you, know, you can take the patient's own blood, spin it down, uh, use the plasma uh, portion because we have those growth factors in our own body. So use that to, to, to stimulate the cartilage uh, production. Just, I'm, I'm sure you know, it does your heart good to start support and that people no longer have to live in pain. Amen to it. Uh, the natural health, uh, what is it, natural, um, natural, health. A natural, natural health, uh, I keep moving to that website uh, continuously to find out who Deborah Ray is interviewing next. You've got a tremendous number of interviews already you, you've done. Um, what are some of the fascinating interviews that you've done and which are ones upcoming that you're going to be bringing to us in 2011? Well, my most favorite of, of many, many has to be, without a doubt, head and shoulders. I just had the opportunity to interview who celebrated on September the 14th, his 96th birthday. He was born in 1914. Uh, Jack Lane, very much. Oh, Jack, I saw, it on the, I saw it on the website. The godfather of fitness, you call him. Yeah, that's, that's by his own name. By his own, okay, he calls himself that. Dr. Courtney, when I'm 96 years old, he is sharp, he is with it, he just finished a new book, he has a new uh, uh, program on his website for seniors, it's all about uh, getting a better balance. At 96, he is as sharp as he was when I first had the opportunity to interview him 30 years ago. He's 96 years old. What does he say about dying? It just says it's not for his fitting his image or... It would be bad for my image if I die. He doesn't plan on dying any time in the near future, does he? And he doesn't sound like it. He gets up every morning, does an hour and a half uh, of, of activity, uh, still takes his supplements, still eats, eats right. Uh, one of his interesting uh, lifestyle choices, which I was unaware of until recently, is he has a glass of red wine with dinner. And I also learned, not interviewed him literally for 30 years, he's a chiropractor. I never knew that. I didn't know that. My goodness, that he has a chiropractic background degree. Unbelievable. That's part of his whole, that, you know, he has to, it's more than just your test results. <laughs> you know, it's that three-legged stool and you know, your activity. You know, that research is so interesting. There's, there's just one t uh, today at the naturalhealthvillage.com. Walk and um, help prevent Alzheimer's disease, that you know, activity 
had the opportunity a couple of years ago to sit in the audience of Ohio State University um, at, the, at the Arnold Classic at a big anti-aging symposium, and Jack and Elaine Elaine were the, uh, the headliners. But here's these Ohio State University researchers that were talking about study after study that exercise daily activity. You, know, you don't have to run a marathon, whatever fits for you, whether it's, you know, 10, you know, just walk five minutes after each meal three times a day. You know, in a year, you cover the distance between L.A. and San Francisco, there's good bona fide science, that makes a tremendous difference in your health factor. Well, uh, funny, not funny, but very interesting for you to say, without a doubt, Jack Lane. That by the way, that interview. Am I right about it? Natural House Science News dot org. Is that where we can get that interview? Because you have so many great interviews, uh, but you put them up and you rank them number one, huh? He was just well, just always one of my favorites because as the king of one-liners. I had the opportunity years ago at the uh, Natural World Products Expo West in Anaheim at uh, the trade show where I was broadcasting. He was sharing my booth that year. We spent the whole weekend together because he had just debuted a, a whole series of, of uh, videos with his juicing. And uh, somebody passed by. They were a, a Pittsburgh viewer. I remember going up in Pittsburgh and he was on the, on TV. He was on I remember TV. that show. Absolutely. And he walked by and, and telling him, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. I, oh my goodness, I watched all the time, I used to exercise to eat every day, and he looked at her and said, why did you stop? <laughs> <laughs> because she obviously had stopped a long time ago. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Deborah. Only he could get away with it. Here's this lovely lady who's obviously, unfortunately, not making wise lifestyle choices, saying, why did you stop? <laughs> Outstanding. Well, look, uh, somebody knocked on the door. I know that uh, everybody's out there going to take a piece of you, but uh, would you answer a question or two if they're coming by? Absolutely. Hey, you are on the air with Deborah Ray. Go right ahead. What do you got in mind to ask her? Go ahead and ask her. Hi, I just had a question um, for both of you. I wanted your opinions on um, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Do they really, um, as far as your knowledge, do they really practice what they preach? Or is it all kind of a marketing thing to make it look like they have a natural bent? Uh-huh. Thank you. All right. I'll take a quack at that. You want to hear my response, too? Um, yeah, uh, the issue with cancer, I, I think that uh, what they've done is a, it's a combining of the chemotherapeutic approaches, the oncology approach to treating cancer, along with the good things of nutrition and the like, but it's firmly entrenched, in my opinion, as I've seen it, Deborah, and I don't know how, we, how you're going to answer. Uh, it is uh, the standard company line with using um, chemotherapy along with a very strong nutritional and vitamin approach. That's how I've seen it. Do you see it any differently or pretty much the same? I concur. Uh, Dr. Patrick Quillen was there for many years as the head of nutrition, followed by Dr. Stephen Birdsall. Of course, neither one of those the nutrition giants are there. They still continue to provide great nutritional support with patients. So it's not as innovative as it once was, but certainly a good, you know, good source of using the conventional cancer treatments along with nutrition. Yes, exactly right. And uh, so they've done some very good marketing, I think. Uh, and so those who would prefer to proceed along the uh, oncological route, the chemotherapeutic route, uh, but not lack in any nutritional uh, uh, assist would be enhanced by proceeding along the Cancer Treatment America line. If those uh, who would say, I don't want to do chemotherapy uh, at all, probably should stay clear of that because they're strongly entrenched in the conventional area. And that's, that's how I've approached it up till now. So. Um, uh, if, you're, if you're looking to proceed conventional, they would be strongly, uh, they, they, they'd be the avenue to pursue. And there's uh, a time and place for it. And there is a time and place, especially there are, a few, few, there are a few cancers out there, by the way, who have an excellent response to conventional treatments. But, you know, thankfully, there, there are innovations on that. So Ralph Moss has taught me there's a, a lab out in San Diego, a rational therapeutics, a lot of hospitals around the country 
actually take a uh, you know, biopsy of tissue sample and test it. The nice thing about rational therapeutics uh, in California, they test it against natural agents. So as, as Ralph has taught me, you're not just using you know, somebody's recipe for cancer, you're using the agent that's best for your cancer. And what's the name of that uh, group out in San Diego? The rational Therapeutics. Rational Therapeutics. Nagorni, love, he's just lovely. He will up to uh, 38 different agents and you know, say, I want to use natural agents as well. And they'll test your cancer against those agents and tell you what's best for you. Rational Therapeutics. And, well, I'm, I'm writing feverishly when you speak, as I always have. No difference now. You got Deborah Ray with that? Well, we're right at the gong. They're coming up to the end of it. Uh, boy, what a what a great and wonderful hour this has been. Uh, Deborah, we're going to be holding you to that thing with the shows back to 1982. That's a major product. You think by May that's going to be up and going, huh? I promise that it will be. Absolutely. Oh, you promise? Oh, boy. Okay. So we'll have to check on that one. Uh, for in the spirit, we're always, uh, each and every show I do, your spots play in the background. Uh, by the way, that uh, nice little uh, gift thing they put together, I think, is a great uh, uh, tribute to Fear the Spirit. That $29 thing where you get the the, uh, the gift packaging and so forth. I love it. That, yeah, oh yeah, great great way to uh, the uh, to uh, spread love and uh, enjoy around this holiday season. Uh, it looks as though grass isn't growing under your feet any any more now than it ever has been, uh, and your energy. Yeah, yeah. Your energy level is uh, always a, a bit amazing to me, and it seems like. Uh, and so happy to hear, by the way, uh, you're newly married. Say hello to Ron for us, uh, uh, as hopefully I'm going to have a chance to meet him this year. We'll come and see you, absolutely, promise. Okay, thank you, Deborah Ray. Merry Christmas, thank you. Merry Christmas to you too. There you have it, the straight and skinny on Deborah Ray and what she's been doing. Bongos in the background suggest our time out of here today. Uh, looking forward to see you on Monday. Brian Fultz is going to be with us until then. This is Dr. Dennis Courtney with Deborah Ray saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health.